Welcome back, brother and sister. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray that you will give us even more revelation and understanding of your word. In Jesus' name. Today we're going to go over the parable of the rich man. Uh, written in the book of Luke. New Testament scripture. And to God be the glory. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Book of Luke chapter 12. Verses 16 through 21. And he spake. And in this case he is Jesus Christ. And he spake a parable unto them saying. The ground of a certain rich man. Brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself. Saying. What shall I do? Because I have no room. Where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will put down my barns. I will build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy knees, eat, drink, and be merry. But God saith unto him thou fool this night thy soul shall be required of thee then who shall these things be which thou hast provided so is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God Blessed be the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, this is self-explanatory. And we thank God for this parable. Because we see how God sees things. And blessed is the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I pray and hope that this parable will increase the fear of the Lord in you. Because see, this man did not speak. This man was talking in his heart in his mind what he thought to himself the Lord had given him increase everything comes from God the earth and the fullness thereof belong to the Lord to Jesus Christ praise God for that and even as he received increase what did he think about himself himself and himself and he thought you know I have all this fruit, more than he can handle. And what's he going to do? He's going to build bigger, right? Build better. For who? For himself. So that he can relax. And the Lord says, you fool, this night your soul is required. And not only is your soul required, but now think, when the Lord removes him and wipes him, from the face of the earth, this is New Testament scripture, who will enjoy his goods? You see? The goods that he thought he had. The goods that he thought he owned. Did he own the goods? Yeah, while he was on this earth. But once he's removed, he's no longer the owner. He no longer has rights over these things. Because there's one that is a possessor, a possessor who possesses all things who all things really belong to. And that's the bottom line. And it's Jesus Christ. And we see how the Lord was displeased with this attitude of this rich man. Who was not rich towards God. And we bless the name of Jesus. This also reminds me of the parable that the Lord Jesus Christ gave. Where he gave talents. He gave one one talent. He gave one five talents. And he gave one about seven, seven talents, something like that. And one multiplied. Two of them actually multiplied. And one of them buried the talent and did not multiply, did not put it to work. And the one who buried the talent in the earth and dug it up and said, Lord, I knew that you were wroth. I, I, knew, I knew that you were a hard man. And the Lord said, you evil servant. 
Why? Because he only thought about himself. He didn't multiply. He didn't give of what he had. And we see here this servant with the plentiful. He's only thinking about himself. At no point is he thanking the one who gave him all these things. And not only thanking, but putting it to work to the glory of God. You see? So, the reason for this message is because we look around and we see people with riches and we see people that think to themselves, hey, I can relax. I have good years ahead. And guess what? When their soul is required of the Lord, at the end of the day, who will enjoy those riches? And not only that, but because the attitude has been one of not being rich toward God, where would that person's soul go for eternity for those wicked thoughts? And not only that, but seeing people in need. And I encourage you to read and to look up scriptures concerning alms, concerning the poor and caring for the poor. Jesus Christ did say the poor will always be with us. Praise God for everything that the Lord said. However, he said that he who gives alms, he will deliver them from the will of his enemies. Praise God. And we know that the centurion Cornelius was one that gave alms and salvation. He, was much, he feared the Lord and he was in prayer and fasting as well. And salvation came to his house. So we bless the name of Jesus. May the fear of the Lord be in our hearts. May we obey him. And may we, 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 we be rich towards God instead of towards ourselves, seeking this comfort for a, an extended period of time. Let's not do wickedly like this, this rich man did. Everything that we have belongs to the Lord. So let's put it towards him. If someone needs, you give in the name of Jesus Christ because guess who gave us? It was Jesus. So we can forward these things and multiply the gospel, the kingdom. That's what it's all about. To give he, to he who thirsts and he who hungers. So to God be the glory in all things. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ.